Hey, Ange. Hey, Les. How are you? I'm doing well. You look good. You look good. Yeah. I, ch- I changed the angle of my uh, video a little bit. Maybe oh, I yes. should go back to the shoes or do oh, you yes. like this like this? Well, let's let's see. Well, let's see. And let's see if um, anyone says anything. I, Ooh, I, know I would like that. I would like to see if uh, any of our millions of fans <laughs> <laughs> notice that I'm now sitting so- on the edge <laughs> of the table in my dressing room versus... <laughs> But I also, I'm going to put back my regular filter because that's who I am. Okay, you can have that that? as long as I get to keep Brooklyn. Okay, okay. Then here we are. All right. (laughs) So hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. Brooklyn. We are here. We know we've had um, guests, quite a few guests this season. but Yeah. We also want to make sure that we keep some of these episodes with just Leslie and I talking about stuff Mm -hmm. and um, sharing that stuff that we're talking about with you. So here we are, just the two of us. We get, why am I always singing? And I cannot, listen. You are always I just want you to know, I am clear that I do not have a singing voice, right? (laughs) But, but that has no, okay. that has nothing to do with whether I sing or not. And I think people should sing if they want to sing. <laughs> <laughs> sing out. Sing out loud. I have a large song repertoire from Jamaica and coming up here in the 70s. And what is it? Casey Kasem and all of these people. And of course, all the R&B. So listen, it's going to come out. Plus, I'm a Dolly Parton fan. Look, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear and, it. And, and don't forget like the singing that comes up in Bible study. Yes, that too. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Um, sing a joyful noise. Is that uh, what the okay. Bible says? There okay. We go. <laughs> I hope it's joyful anyway. I hope <laughs> no one is cringing. <laughs> You know you love it. Okay, so we are back in the building and so much that um, we want to share. So much has been going on. Oh my goodness, so much. A lot even has this been morning. Going on. Even this morning. Right, Les? I so guess. So what that's... happened? What happened? <laughs> so I had an exciting morning. Both Omari and I had exci- an exciting morning because a television film crew and reporter came to my home to wow. interview us. Wow. Now, what do we got to say? <laughs> Who cares about us? Well, remember, folks, this is uh, April is Organ Donation Month. Yes. And I guess um, he and I are uh, poster children for um, organ donation. Yeah, that's so awesome. I love it. I want. I wanted to get as much mileage as possible because, um, you know, we don't often get to see people who look like you and Omari in this space. And I right. think the more that people see that, the more they'll be willing to do some of what you've been talking about to consider um, a living donation. So, it's and it's awesome. so funny that you said that because at one point the reporter asked me what would you say about people in black communities? Mm -hmm. Um, Are there anything specific to say about um, organ donation and their weight for kidneys and things like that? And Mm -hmm. I said, oh, sis, (laughs) funny you should ask. (laughs) You know, so we did talk a bit about the disparities in communities of of, uh, people of color. And I'm not going into that right now, but I will go into it because in addition to being on NJ Spotlight News tomorrow at 6, that's Tuesday. 6 Eastern time. What? What? April 18th. April 18th. At 6 p.m. Tomorrow is the 18th. It's going to be on the PBS um, station. Oh, man. So Omari and I will be on TV. But in addition to doing that, I am also going to be a panelist um, discussion this very thing uh, mm-hmm. next week. Okay. So, Leslie, just, what else? Because you just told me today, 
And I can't believe you just told me. So listen, I started talking to you and I'm like, you know what? We're going to be recording later. I'm not going to tell you anymore. I'm not going to tell you anymore. But (laughs) tomorrow at our city council meeting, my township is going to give, and I don't even know how this works, if me present me and Omari with a proclamation of wow. donation or something oh like gosh. this. It's like, what? That's me? So Little old me? Little old you. But um, I'm really excited about it. And I just told Omari, wear a dress shirt. You might... <laughs> You might end up in the local. Here I'm telling this grown ass man how to dress, but you know he may come in casual Always a mother. or whatever. Always yes. a mother, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know the people will see me like cuffing them up in the corner, like you want to go home and change you. <laughs> They're like, what am I five years old? <laughs> oh my but, goodness, That's but you, wonderful. But you know, Les Omari's and, so cool. Um, <laughs> Omari said, uh, should I wear a white shirt? You think I should wear it? I'm like, no, just business casual would be fine. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. excited about all of the things and the education, uh, the opportunities to tell my story and to educate people about organ donation mm-hmm. and what they can do to help and things to look out for and all of those things. It's really special to me. Mm-hmm. And it all started with us talking last season on the podcast about the uh, kidney swap episode. It did. It That's did. how my employer heard about it and some right. press people and the news heard about it. So, yeah, you never I think know. I'm hot stuff. You never, I, it you didn't know, just Me start. and my one kidney. It didn't just <laughs> Yeah, and you're one digger digger kidney. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love how much um, the word is getting out. I love that folks are hearing about it through Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So another thing that I started speaking to you about earlier today, and we cut the conversation short, Um as you and I were planning our uh, content for the next few episodes, Mm -hmm. I think it's important to bring up that topic of, I'm going to call it imposter syndrome, but Mm -hmm. now it makes me a little nervous to say it because when (laughs) I mentioned it a few episodes previously, you kind (laughs) of shut me down and said like, wait a minute, Les, it's not an imposter syndrome if other people around you are making you feel as though you are not worthy to be in that space. Exactly. Um, So that's not a shutdown. That's telling you to be clear because you don't want to hold yourself responsible for changing things that are outside of your control. But there is imposter syndrome, and and we'll talk about that. I was just making the point that when people don't invite you in the room, or if they make you feel weird when you're in the room, that's not imposter syndrome. That's mm-hmm. something that they are doing to you. It's not just this internal thing that you struggle with, even though we do. It's just yeah, not that. Yeah. It's just okay. not that. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. I think then that I had it. I had a touch of the syndrome. <laughs> no, let me just put it this way. I think I'm coming down with a syndrome. <laughs> the syndrome got you. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I was speaking to the reporter and I was telling my story, so clearly I know what I'm talking about, you know, and she was asking me um, my feelings about the experience And as you can imagine, I walk a fine line between two worlds. I walk Mm -hmm. a line between being a physician and a healer. Mm -hmm. And then I also walk a a line about um, being the family member or loved one of a person who was ill Mm -hmm. and being a mom of a person who was ill. Yeah. Um, And at certain points as I was speaking, I was... I'm, I wouldn't say second guessing myself, but mm-hmm. I kept asking myself, like, are you making sense? Are you sure this is right? And I just started like having some doubts about things. It's, it was just an odd feeling. And you heard that voice. 
I heard, heard it. I, I didn't hiccup. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I did. It was almost like a, um, I was having a different conversation in my head. As mm. I was speaking, I was making sure to verify what I was saying. Right. So it was like a veracity mm. check as mm. I was speaking. Mm. I don't encounter that very often because in my work, I'm usually a lot more definitive and sure. Yeah. Such that that second guessing doesn't come up. I'm not sure where that came from, though. Mm. Let's investigate. Mm. Let's investigate. But do we have to investigate no. in public? We do. <laughs> we do not. We do not. But what I what I do um, appreciate is um, that we're willing to be vulnerable with this side of ourselves because I think that um, we don't want in any way for people to think that we have it all together. We sometimes do and we sometimes don't. And, you know, we have fears and we have, um, uh, you know, doubts about who we are and how we're showing up and whether we're, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I know for me, one of the things is, um, uh, you know, are you are you being too much? You know, that kind of thing. Because, mm. you know, I'm a deep thinker um, and I like to ask questions because I want to understand. And sometimes people take my questions as questioning them about what they're doing versus questioning just to understand. Maybe even that I could appreciate what they're doing even more. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Does the that voice, mean that you're fearing um, that they might be judging you? Well, I fear that because I hear that that um, uh, I know that sometimes the way that I come across is off putting. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I remember the first time someone told me that I was. Um, what was the word they use uh, that I was? Uh, I don't know if it was confrontational. Um, or condescending, something like that. And I'm like, wow. what? What? I, I, those words I never, confrontational maybe. <laughs> because Not I do have, me. well, I do, well, you know that I have that side of me because I have, um, I have my opinions and I, I, I don't, um, I, I, I when I see something that either needs clarification or it's going wrong and I can do something to correct it, I feel like it's my responsibility to, to, to do it. And right, right, right. That's, that's true. I guess like when you called me out and when I said um, what I just said about the doubts and what have you. Right, like, right, uh, right. That's not and imposter even, syndrome. You and know. Even, even like that, right, you calling it calling calling me out mm -hmm. um it it can have different meanings and um the the fact is that it's just like if there was spinach on your teeth or the mm. toilet paper in your thing as we talked about you know yeah, season yeah. one if i see something that i can um you know shine up for you or um just help you to understand a little better um, I, 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 I say it. And but, so, you know, that's like that plaque that I have. I'm not bossy. I'm just helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, it, it depends on who it's directed it to. Right. Right. You know? And how, and how it's presented. Timing is really important. I was just going to say when you, uh, present that or right. offer that, because right, there right. are times when you might quote unquote, confront me mm -hmm. and I feel intimidated. Mm. Really? But, Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then there may be other times when it's like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. So you're right, right. timing is really important. Right, right. Yeah, and um, yeah, so anyway. So is there ever not, <laughs> is there ever not a good time to tell someone that they have spinach on their teeth? Um, is there never not a good time? Is well, there ever not a good time? In other words, does yeah. timing apl apply to everything? I mean, obviously, if they're walking onto railroad tracks, you know. Well, you I know, think, but. I think, um, 
Yeah, I think if you were on stage as a speaker, I wouldn't like stand up in the crowd and say, hey, yeah, you got yeah, spinach yeah. on your that teeth. Way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyway. Um, That's interesting, isn't it? So you know what I've been doing, right? I just finished an email. I tried to. It, oof. It's just. <laughs> I thought you I, let that go. <laughs> well, I did let it go. I'm mentioning it here because um, this podcast, as we have said a lot, just puts me in a really good mood. And it helped mm-hmm. me to kind of pull myself, you know, one of those emails, guys, where you just have to kind of lay some things out and just be really clear, not rude or anything, but just be clear bullets, um, just kind of shut down any miscommunication that may be going on. Um, I pride myself on writing um, communication that is really clear, especially written communication. Mm -hmm. I'm working on the spoken communication, but especially written. And so... um, You're my letter writer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, but despite that, uh, when we're talking about... And the one hour delay that it caused (laughs) us getting on camera. Because I want to do it right. Because I want to do it right. Okay, I'm here. And I I had to kind of put aside the um some of the you know the rancor that i was feeling yeah put it in its place and do it properly but when we're talking about imposter syndrome it came up for me um it has come up for me when i a few years ago when i was in theater when i was doing it when i felt really green and even when I had some experience, I was like, oh, my gosh, how am I how am I going to do this? They, they really think I can do this. And ultimately, mm-hmm. I did. But you do have to quiet those voices. You know, I always say mine is Judge Judy. I always have to turn Judge Judy yeah. down and um, just do what is required. You know, just do what is required. So. I wonder where that comes from, though. Where the imposter syndrome comes from? Well, no. Yeah, I guess so. Because I'm saying that in my case, if a whole news uh, reporter and cameraman and the producer who sent them to me and who I had uh, prior discussion with there's that damn that. Not only did it, excuse me. <laughs> Leslie, I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. All right. Are you okay? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why I'm laughing because I swallowed it. It went in my mouth. And in our prior podcast, oh as Lord, I mentioned I to you afterwards, <laughs> the gnat went up my nose. Oh and my I gosh. tried not to react. I, I didn't want to. I knew I was on camera, so, but it just flew in my mouth. Oh, lastly, you're and I swallowed it just Because <laughs> I didn't want to hawk it up. And, you know, it's like, all right, just let what? the damn thing go down. Oh my oh, goodness, that was something. Okay. I can't breathe. I cannot And we're not going to edit this breathe. out because it's funny as heck. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you, this is the last I'm going to speak about it. My reaction <laughs> was to start like hacking and coughing and this and like, <laughs> but I just said, Leslie, calm, calm down. <laughs> you know, I just had to do some self talk just now. Oh my gosh. But anyway, <clears throat> Leslie. <clears throat> you kill me. Excuse you me really do. You kill me. Hey, listen, y'all see my lashes? So I usually don't have these on, right? But <clears throat> this, um, when was it? Last week, I think it was. I went to the mall to get new makeup. I'd been just kind of piecing together what I had. And I was like, look, I need to get a whole new, just... 
a post pandemic look, a, a coordinated, a coordinated um, set of purposefully purchased, not, <laughs> oh, you like that color and getting stuff from Les or whomever. Um, yeah. And so I went to the Mac counter, actually Mac and Bobby Brown were mm-hmm. right next to each other. And so I sat and there were people waiting at the Mac counter and I had to get back. So I had like, I don't know, an hour and a half or so. And so um, I was like, well, how about Bobby Brown? And um, so they were available. And I asked her, which is better, you know, Mac, should I just wait? And she's like, no, Bobby Brown, because they're better for older skin. And um, so I said, okay. But anyway, her name is um, Shania. And she was wonderful. And she gave me whole uh, makeup. So I'm learning how to put on this new set of makeup properly. So I thought I would throw on some uh, lashes. They look good. They look good. Especially being that this season we're on camera. Yeah. So if you see it like working its way down to my... (laughs) Like cheek. a spider, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the high side. <laughs> Please let me know. That's probably more, more, um, more, uh, more much of a po- more of a possibility than having spinach on teeth. We should probably say, yeah, that our lashes. Yeah. <laughs> that our well, lashes. Well, still just on. about the whole makeup thing. It's funny that because I don't wear a lot of makeup very mm-hmm. often, especially with the you know pandemic, and I wear a mask at work all the time and whatever. Right. right. Um. We. <laughs> we schedule our podcast now around whether or not we have makeup on for the day. <laughs> so I have on eyelashes because I was on camera earlier. Mm. So I'm like, we need to film. We need to get it in. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, um, so there, there, what I've been doing, as you know, is spending a lot of time working on different plays and last month yeah the month of may no um march Mm -hmm. i worked on four different plays three of them simultaneously um doing different things designing for some and um uh yeah actually just designing and then the one that i'm working on now is the color purple and what I'm doing for that one is called wig coordinator. They kind of, they rent a wig package, but I have to do all the fittings and the styling and, and things like that. And mm-hmm. so I've been in the theater a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I would say that I overextended myself, but um, just when I was feeling like, okay, enough is enough it dwindled down to just one. So I am um, happy about that because I get time to do what? Okay, here's where I was having, I was having a lot of, I am pushing through a lot of um, imposter syndrome. Okay. And that is around a um, giving myself permission to see myself as a coach to um acknowledge well when i was in california on my long sabbatical i i i've told you that i um you know doing the podcast was one of the things that came to me that i really wanted to do as i thought about what are the things that bring me joy and how how could I have more what I like to call joyful money making, right? Mm-hmm. Choosing to um, do the things that um, bring me joy and um, making an income from those things instead of separating the two. Okay, my work is not so much fun and then I, I have fun after. And so joyful money making. So yeah. the other thing that came to me while I was out there is... Um, is that I've been mentoring, coaching just for so long. It's one of those consistent threads of my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I put coaching on my, on my board on the kind of um, 
the way that I was kind of capturing that this download that I got of what I should do next. And it's been really hard for me to let it fully in. That is like, oh, you want to be a coach? What, what, what is that? So I'm getting a lot of, a lot of that um, that's coming down. But what I know for sure is that um, I have been really good at it. It's a big part of what I did when I was in corporate with my teams, with people who I was the manager who folks who reported to other managers would come to because of the way that I um, just help them to understand and help them to kind of cope with things that were going on and put things into a perspective that um, allowed them to um, just see things a little differently. And so... I am developing a coaching program and um, I'm really excited about it because the more that I do it, the more that I see that it just flows out of me, um, Mm -hmm. that I have a lot of experience that I can draw on and that it all comes from how I want people to feel that that's like at the core. And um, yeah. so I'm developing this program. And you know that, but I told you before that something is stopping me from saying it on this podcast. Yeah. And you, you <laughs> challenged me on it. That's how you challenged me. It's like, why? Why would you not want to say that? Yeah. And we're going to talk about that because that's imposter syndrome. And yeah, you've, you've mentioned it. We've been talking about this a long time, Ange. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know. I know. So you came out of the closet. So I can. I did. I'm fully Welcome. out. Thank you. It feels good. Stay tuned for more. Um, it is geared around, you know, people of this age and really w- ways that I've learned to get people unstuck or to think mm-hmm. about what their next best is and, and wow. go after it instead of just um you know whatever you're bringing to a corporate arena or whether you're in academia or any other professional setting those skills travel with you you don't leave them when you leave the job whether it's for retirement or any other reason they're part Mm -hmm. of who you are and you could move that into something else and um so it's it's a program around that and um so Anyway, cool. we'll talk more about it, but that's and, what and, was giving me a lot of that. And it's so in line with our brand, what yes. we do here for yeah. uh, Black Boomer Besties mm-hmm. from Brooklyn. Right. That's how we actually started the podcast or our intention. Yep. Uh, you know, to show people that there's another way. Right. To right. perhaps get people unstuck. Yep. Um, in a humorous way, kind of... Um, start them thinking about the next level or the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, It is. And it's not, it's not by coincidence because when I, this all came to me at, at one time, it was um, a very clear, I had spent weeks just kind of um, allowing myself to just be and not put pressure on myself about what I was going to do and so on. So it was a time in my life when my um, headspace was completely clear and Mm -hmm. I was able to hear my download from the Lord on um, what what was next. And like I told you, I just kind of sketched all these things on a whatever, a napkin or whatever. And then Mm -hmm. just like I would PowerPoint, (laughs) <laughs> you know, putting it on a quadrant, color coded, and- <laughs> <laughs> color coded, uh, just so I could kind of make sense of it and to see how all of these things fit together. And um, so, anyway, you that- left out the uh, brain what? dump. Oh yeah, always have to do a brain dump. And like you guys know, <laughs> I, I I write three pages every day. That that brings a lot of clarity and. Um, So that's one of the things that I do to get out of my head. You know, I'm in my head because I'm, but I'm getting it out. It's not just Mm -hmm. staying in there. It's getting out and going on paper. And um, then it's not just kind of, you know, just rambling around, taking up space that, um, that it shouldn't be. 
But Mm -hmm. anyway, um, I thank you for calling me on that because that, um, you know, um, it it really kind of gave me permission to pursue this Mm -hmm. and not just listen to the judge in my head telling me that um, this is not really who you are, when in fact it is really who I am. I'm just kind of putting, putting my my sign up, right, to declare yeah. that this is yeah. who I have been and I'm open for business. So well, yeah. that's good. Mm-hmm. Well, I look forward to us hearing a little bit more about it and you developing it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for all the support, Les. Of course. As usual. Of course. As usual. So I'm wondering where did all of my self doubt and i'm not going to say all of it but where does it come from why do i go in and out of this Mm. is that a is that maybe that's just a normal thing you know i'm watching people listen to me earnestly and (laughs) i'm wondering like do they know who i am (laughs) i know sometimes too when you're when you're in the um when you're doing your doctoring (laughs) Yeah, and then yeah. you take a little break and you call me and you do something silly. I'm like, do they know when you go back in the OR, do they really know? Yeah, did I know who you-, you just said that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's an interesting, uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. I think there are a lot of, um, you know, experiences that we have and some of them stick, you know, and it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be a little thing. Somebody could have said something to you at a, at that kind of really vulnerable time and it and it just stuck and you believed it and so yeah. you know as you grow up you're you're still believing all of it or some of it and i think that's a part of it well, just it's layers something, of that it's something that i experience professionally on mm-hmm. a regular basis and and i'm not going to say often but right. i was explaining to my uh, mom the other day that only 5% of physicians in the us are black five mm, percent wow. wow so when people say that they don't know any physicians that are black mm-hmm. i can understand that yeah if people in the hallway you know see me and naturally assume that you know i'm not a physician i may be one of the ancillary staff members mm-hmm. mom you know thought that that was offensive but i said that um I I under I absolutely understand that because if yeah. you think about it, if you see ten people, point five of them would be a physician, a, a black physician, right? And the other nine and a half black people would not be, right? So it's mm-hmm. normal then you'd be right most of the time to mm-hmm. assume that a black person in a hospital is not a physician. Yeah, you know so. Yeah. You're so, had, You're so forgiving. You're so forgiving. But but you I are. think it's more it's a practical thing. And I don't mind showing people that we exist, that we are or black people, black physicians look like this right, or can right. be silly or right, right. you know, I wear um you know, my jeans with the cutouts and holes in them, mm-hmm. which both mom and Ernest hate. But uh, mom was like, look at you. You're a physician. What do you mean? You now, you don't wear those to work. Bed. You don't no, wear those to not. work. Of okay. Not. Okay. No, let's no, just no, make no. I know that. But let's just make general, it clear. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In general. But um, to Walmart, I'll right. wear it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I can blend in. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> but no, but but she says like, oh, that's inappropriate. And you're and I'm like, mom, you know, I'm a person and yeah. I'm not trying to look young. I'm proud of the age that I am. But right. this is something, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's 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 weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's, eh. it's just a little odd. It's OK. It's all right. We are who we are. We are who we are. That's the way it's going to be. If you don't yeah. know. Yes, that's a, my little bit of um, Bob Marley, which will be coming out more and more. I've been listening to um, Bob Marley Radio, but what is it? I think it's um, on Sirius. I forget what station mm-hmm. it is. 
but I've been listening to that more and more on my long drives home oh, from the yeah. theater. Oh, yeah, I'm not, um, I'm not familiar with that. You I, gotta let me know what number that but is. I think it's Bob Marley Radio. I think that's it what is, it's called. but I don't know what way, what which number it is. You know oh. where to find it. I stick to I like either. one or two, three or three stations total, and yeah. that's where I stick with. You know, I'm very like that. Right. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Once I program it, I don't. I don't remember. Like your phone number. Well, I know yeah. your phone number, but yeah. a lot of people's phone number, I don't know because it's right. just in my phone. It's not like you know. Um, yours I know because I knew that number prior to being so a phone senior citizen. Focused. <laughs> what did I say that out loud? No. <laughs> prior, See, prior to the onset of the <laughs> dementia. <laughs> so only the short term memory is gone, the long term memory you see persists. What I have to deal with. And listen, we're not la- listen, my mother died of dementia and she was a <laughs> beloved mom to leslie so yes, we're not making fun of it per se so why so why why loss. is that funny just Les? why is loss. that funny just my so just my memory loss yeah you won't be laughing when it's when, when you don't remember me when I, <laughs> <laughs> and then when you leave the that room i'm like funny. when you leave the room i'm like i can't stand her i know who she is <laughs> i just don't want her to come back i'm 40 something years, 50 something, 60 something years. I'm done. Yeah, I've had I enough. I've had enough. So, Ange, but, in mm. the few minutes that we have left in yes. this episode, and I know it's been a hodgepodge, but I want to talk about the things that are coming up in um, some of our future uh, episodes. Okay. Um, for sure, we're going to start exploring the whole AI phenomenon, <laughs> artificial intelligence. And I know you have strong feelings about that, but um, there are I so many it. implications yeah. and uses and things like that. In mm-hmm. fact, we're going to invite one of our, another bestie, um, who is an expert in that regard. Yes. So yes. Um, We know a lot of really amazing people, cool guys. People. It's just, our village is so eclectic and and wonderful so mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. someone else so that you have um to meet. we're going to speak to her and oh she's just such a brilliant lady so i know that she'll be able to give us some insight and maybe allay some of our fears but there are reasons to be fearful i i, I give you that mm-hmm. i give you that mm-hmm. i overheard um one of the actually I think he might have been the CEO of Google Mm -hmm. on 60 Minutes the other day. I'm not sure if that's what I'm referring to, but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they did talk about, in addition to building up the technologic um, capabilities of Mm -hmm. AI, Mm -hmm. they need to really start thinking about um, ethical considerations. Yeah. Uh, which usually societal, come after the fact, right? right. Societal, um, medical, mm-hmm. legal. Mm-hmm. And he advocated that we work on these different arenas in tandem. Right. So right. that the technology has not been so uh, advanced, far advanced, mm-hmm. before the other issues have yet to be considered. Right, right. And that's a common sense approach. It's 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 not let's stop the train, the AI mm-hmm. train. Mm-hmm. Um but let's also start thinking about the other implications and things that need to be uh to accompany it. And I I like that idea. So is he is and this he is a tech s- guy speaking? Right, but is this tech guy saying that um this is what we're doing this, you guys do that other stuff? Or I mean is he going to play a role in those things or it's just like, y'all better keep up. I don't know if he was uh, suggesting a collaboration, but he did stress um, Mm -hmm. that he identified the need for a multidisciplinary approach to um, the AI advances, you know, and I like that. Okay. I I like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that because I know we have a lot of strong feelings about that. Yeah. Maybe by then I I do want to try it a little bit just to um, just to 
know some of it through personal experience and not just kind of um, um, having heard about it. But are you talking I, about chat GPT specifically? I guess so. I don't even know the names of there's, them. There's a few out. Yeah. Well, what I thought I would try it for <laughs> is um, writing some blogs because I have so much that I can say, but a, a part of the difficulty in keeping up with the blogging is taking the time, you know, I'm a wordsmith and pouring it over and over and over. And I want to kind of see if I put that information out into this tool. Yeah, yeah. How you would it try. use it's, it's it and do that? Yeah, and do that kind of um, yeah. polishing that takes me so much time to do. So I'm going to try it. I'm yeah. not going to like, yeah, be so afraid. And in the educational arena, you know, the professors and teachers are grappling with it. And sure. a lot of them are embracing it and saying that there are uses for it. But, right. It, right. you know, I guess they need to design curricula around it and things like that. Right. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's ooh, it's a bit much. Anyway. So um, we also are going to talk about our what? retreat. Oh. But that we're, is we're, coming. we're, I know we're developing it and yep. we need Oops. to come back and we, we need to uh, come back in a way where we're all zen, yes, and calm um, and chill and, and back to exercising fully. I've, yeah. yeah, and get, get, um, uh, we're gonna eliminate a lot of these blocks and barriers that, um, are coming up for the two of us individually and collectively. A yeah, bit, you know, because yeah. we do things in tandem very often. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we're looking forward to sharing that experience with you all, too. Right. Um, and remember, I said it's going to be like a um, technology free. I did not eating, agree to that. I clean agree. eating. Te clean eating. Body centered. <laughs> now I'm making stuff up as we go. Tech. <laughs> Tech free is something that you have put out there. I'm not on board with that just yet. I mean, just for certain times in the day, not to be connected all the time, but um, just Ooh, to. We could give ourselves like an hour window. Exactly. An there hour. You go. Could you, that would Talk be about like compromise. Yes. 23 that's what I mean. free. Right. 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 Okay. Like okay. That. You're good with that? Yeah, I'll be the first one picking up the phone and like looking at texts. <laughs> I'm not a TV watcher, but I do uh, look at my phone anyway. <laughs> and you, you watch your Judge Judy. Um, um. First of all, I'm Judge Judy <laughs> and Jeopardy. Hey, all these those days. are the two things, right? I I would watch. You would get Judge off Judy, the phone with me anymore. for those, which oh, is yeah. you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a little, it's a little. But then I come back to you at seven thirty, okay. and finish the sentence. <laughs> Wait, I gotta go. Oh, okay, you yeah, got yeah, two yeah. minutes. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know what time it is. Your little guilty pleasure. That's fine. Yeah. All yeah. right, let's wrap it up. I think we need to. Yes. It's nice seeing you, dear. You, you, you too, put your head up. Pie. You've had your head down going back and forth to the I theater. Know. I know. And I have I been in the OR so often the last, man, four days I've been working. I feel like 36 hours straight. I feel I feel for you so badly because I I know that wears you out. But, um, you, but it's you're good. committed. I, I you're still committed. enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Weirdo. Anyway. All right, guys. Thank you thank for listening you. to another episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. Brooklyn! <laughs> <laughs>